In this new video series, I want to teach you guys how to fix cars, but I don't want you to be simple parts changers, okay? There's plenty of great YouTube videos online for changing certain parts if you have a car and you know what the issue is, you know what part you need to change. There's plenty of resources available for that. What I want to teach you is how our car works and the foundational understanding of the vehicle and how all of its different systems interact with each other. That way you'll be able to diagnose problems and change the part efficiently. I don't think there's any better topic to start this video series off with than the topic of fasteners. You might think it's a little bit rudimentary, a little simple, but I'd encourage you not to underestimate the subject. Any experienced mechanic will tell you that the difference between a 30 minute job and a three minute job is one stripped bolt. It's like the Joker, one bad day. One stripped bolt is all it takes to turn your simple repair into a nightmare. So we're gonna talk about fasteners and whether you are a wrench and you've been a wrench all your life or you don't know which end of the screwdriver to hold, I guarantee that this video has something in it for you. Here's a quick definition of torque for you if you don't know. Torque is a rotational force acting on the head of the bolt when you're trying to loosen it or tighten it, and it is multiplied. The force that you generate with your hand is multiplied by the length of the wrench. So the longer the wrench, the easier it is to loosen a tight bolt. Now, if the bolt is really tight, you want to be able to fit the longest wrench that you can get in there. And if the bolt is, is delicate, you might want to actually choke up on the wrench a little bit. That way it's easier to control the torque and you don't over tighten it. Now, it's also important to keep in mind that torque acts on the socket extensions as well. So when you have a force being applied trying to rotate the bolt, it is also trying to bend the bolt and pull the socket off of the head. Now, if you have a free hand to be able to grab the head of the ratchet, it's not a problem. You can easily counter the torque because it's not a, as much torque as you're putting on the wrench with your pushing hand. But if you don't have the space to be able to get your hand up onto the head of the ratchet that you're using to loosen the bolt, it's important that you want to use the shortest extension possible to loosen the bolt. Otherwise, you're going to be putting the bending load on the bolt and it might damage the fastener, possibly even break it. Just wanna butt in here for a moment and ask you to please give this video a thumbs up if you're enjoying the content so far. It really helps me to help you by delivering better content in the future, so if you could, really appreciate it. Now, fasteners that have been through many heat cycles, that means going from a high temperature back down to room temperature, are a particularly challenging fastener to unscrew. That's because they have a very high rate of oxidation, so you'll usually see them caked up with rust, these are generally fasteners that you'll find on the exhaust system as it's the only system that really generates enough temperature to damage the bolt. And the heat will also cause the bolt to degrade in its structural integrity too and make it easier to snap once you go and put torque to it. So it's good to tread lightly and take your time with these bolts because breaking something or stripping something is gonna make the whole job take a lot longer than it would have if you had just been patient and worked with the bolt slowly. So when you're working with a bolt like this on an exhaust system, don't go in there and just try to loosen it dry because a lot of times it breaks and if it doesn't break, you'll round off the head of the bolt. So what you do first is go in there with a the screwdriver and scrape off any excess rust or grime or anything that's on the outside of it so that the penetrating oil that we're about to use has a easy access into the threads of the fastener. Once the bolt's been cleaned off on the outside, you can go ahead and give it a few taps. That loosens up some of the fine particles between the threads, hopefully, and allows the penetrating oil an easier way to wick itself into the fastener. So once that's clean, give it a few taps with a screwdriver and hammer or a punch if you have it, and then go ahead and spray some of your penetrating oil on it. The oil will wick its way into the threads, and this is an important thing not to skip and that is to give it time to work. Wait, I'd say give it at least 30 minutes to do its job, no less. Uh, it's even better if you can wait longer than that because it is a very tight passage that this oil has to work its way through and you don't wanna rush this process. You wanna give it time to work its way through there because like I said before, if you don't have enough patience for it, it's actually gonna take longer than it would have if you had just waited. Right here we have the lovely Phillips head screw. And for some reason, manufacturers decided not to leave it back in the 1930s where it belonged and still use it to this day. And if they don't use it today, definitely through the 90s and the early 2000s, it was used for machine screws that in my opinion are too tight to be a Phillips head. Now, if you encounter something that's too tight and it runs the risk of camming out, be gentle. 
apply a lot of downward force and you might be able to loosen it up with a little bit of tapping from the hammer and also a little bit of penetrating oil never hurts if you add that into the mix as well. But make sure that you're using the correct Phillips head drive screwdriver because you have three different main sizes that you're gonna find on an automobile. You have the P1, which is the skinniest, P2, which is the most common, and P3 is the biggest size that you'll find on a standard car. If you use the wrong screw head size, you will almost certainly cam it out. And if it's even too tight, past the tapping, past the penetrating oil, you got the right size on there. What you're gonna need is a impact screwdriver. Let me show you. This tool here is specifically designed for very high, very tight Phillips head screws and also other drive types if you get the appropriate bit for them. They usually come with a flat head bit and multiple different Phillips head size bits. Um, and what it does is when you apply force to it with a hammer, um, it will create a downward force on the screw and also a turning force and once this thing comes out, it's very rare that it doesn't work. Uh, you just have to make sure that what is behind the screw is quite strong and it doesn't break from the force of the impact of the hammer. But all in all, this is a very worthwhile tool to pick up if you don't have one in your toolbox. I will leave a link to this in the video's description below. The last segment I wanna to touch on is over torquing. Now, believe it or not, every bolt on this vehicle has a correct torque spec and you're not supposed to go over or under, but for most things that aren't safety related or holding the engine together, you can get a feel for what's tight and what's too tight through experience and practice. So a couple of the important fasteners that you wanna spend extra attention to to make sure that you're not over tightening them if you don't have a torque wrench or if you're practicing getting the feel for how tight bolts are supposed to be are anything sunken into soft materials such as plastic or aluminum or anything that gets removed and reinstalled frequently such as your oil drain plugs. Now for the oil drain plug, you may wanna use a torque wrench if you're not already familiar with how tight the bolt should be and shouldn't be because that's definitely one that you don't want to strip and damage and you don't want to be under torqued and allow it to fall out while you're driving. So when reinstalling a fastener into plastic or aluminum or anything soft for that matter, I'd recommend, like I said earlier in the video, to choke up on the wrench a little bit. That way you're not applying so much torque to the fastener and it's easier to get a feel for how tight it is that way. Well, those are the ins and outs of fasteners. If you have any suggestions for content you want to see in the future, let me know in the comments below. And otherwise, I will see you in the next one.